So I have this package called test data bot, which is used to build test data for your testing, uh, unsurprisingly, given the name. Uh, the way it works is the idea is rather than just defining ad hoc objects in your tests, uh, what instead we can do is use a builder or a factory that, that creates these objects. This means that if you use, say, your user builder every time you need to create a user for the purpose of testing, you'll get kind of an upstate, the same user that gets random data that looks roughly like a real user would. So it's used to ensure that your data in tests is close to the real thing. And that if the structure of a user changes, what you can do is simply uh, update your factory and then all your tests will be using the upstate version of the user. This module has got a few people using it and a few people have asked uh, about TypeScript support. Uh, for a while, I've just been wanting to do this as a good way to learn and get better at TypeScript. I've dabbled, I would not say I'm an expert by any means. And so what I thought uh, I'd do today just to see if, if people find this useful is just record myself maybe 15, 20 minutes working on moving test data bot into TypeScript. If people like this and find it enjoyable, I will quite happily do another video and record more of my work on it, but we'll just see how the first 20 minutes goes. So I have done some work already. The work I've done already is setting up Jest to run with TypeScript. So we have TypeScript Jest in there now. Uh, I've also installed TypeScript ES Lint uh, using actually a blog post that I wrote a long time ago. It's great when that, that happens. I can refer back to a previous blog post. Uh, this one called Configuring ESLint on a TypeScript project. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, so I've been through that to remind myself how that works. And I've got that, I think, working, but we'll, we'll see if anything's broken. Uh, and what I've done is if I make the editor the main window here, I've got the source folder, which is where the old JavaScript plain version is. Uh, I'm not going to translate this code one to one into TypeScript because I actually would like to rewrite some of it. Some of it I'm not super happy with. Uh, and I've also got a ts source project. So that's the one where I'm going to write the TypeScript. And once we're happy with that, we can swap over and use that as the main uh, folder. And I expect that the API will change as well. I, I wasn't super happy with some parts of the API when I built it. And now I'm using TypeScript. I want to be a bit stricter and a bit nicer. My suspicion is some of the current API will be quite hard to type correctly, which for me is probably a sign that we could do a better job uh, of typing it. What I'm actually going to do is close this terminal window to give us a bit more room. Uh, and then we're going to make this window a little bigger uh, as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's just look at the API here that we have. So the way test data bot works is you import these functions you need to so build as the main one, then you get kind of generators almost like fake, which lets you use the faker library to get some fake data and sequence, which increments by one every time. So the first time this user is generated, this email will be jack1 at test.com. The second time will be jack2 at test.com. So it's an easy way to generate kind of unique data. And you can also just hard code fields as well. So rather than kind of dive into building this whole thing in TypeScript, I'm going to try and treat it as if this was a new thing I'm building and just write like the very first version, write one test that works and see how we get on. So if I go into the existing JavaScript tests, uh, you'll see some errors. These are TypeScript errors, but obviously it doesn't, doesn't matter because this code is just for our reference. We're not going to be using this. Uh, and we find the first test, it says it generates an object that can build items. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this test and, and yank it to my clipboard. I use a Vim plugin for VS, VS Code. I'm going to go in TS source and create a new file. And we're going to call this, um, for now, let's just call it index.test.ts. I'm just going to paste that in. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just, whoops, we'll just comment that all out for now. Uh, I've also just noticed in the finder over here that we have index.js. That's been generated for me by TypeScript. So I'm going to delete that. I think I need to pass a different option to the uh, TypeScript compiler to make it output into a directory, but we'll deal with that in a bit. So we're just going to get the first test running here. So let's uh, bring that back and we're going to describe test data bot. Uh, these tests aren't going to be really well named for now. And like having tests in a file called index.test.ts feels a bit odd. I just want to get one test running and we can worry more about the structure later on. We're getting a lot of errors. It's fine. Uh, so let's say it Let's just say it can build a thing. Honestly, I, I just want the most basic test now. So user builder, build user fields. Um, and let's not even worry about the randomness at the moment. Let's just literally create a user with a name of Jack. And we'll expect that user to equal name Jack. Okay, I'm not really sure why I have all these underlined. So we're gonna have a look at this. Uh, missing return type on function. Okay, I was hoping that uh, we, it would just know that we're using Jest at the moment, and therefore I wouldn't have to to type all of these because that's going to get a bit kind of um, a bit much. I'm wondering if this is just ESLint. Like, yeah, TypeScript knows what it is, but ESLint uh, explicit function on return type. It says missing return type on function. So I guess 
I don't really want to disable that rule, but I think TypeScript will tell me off anyway if I have any implicit any. So I think maybe what I could do for now is just take this rule. Uh, can I copy that? Is that going to let me copy it? Yes, it is. Great. Okay. So what we'll do for now is um, is I will go into ESLint RC and we're just going to put that rule in here for now. So the reason I think it's okay to disable this is because uh, I have TypeScript here, this config. I haven't really touched this. Uh, and you can see that down here it says strict true. So we're running as strict uh, operation as we possibly can here. And that means that if I don't type a function explicitly, TypeScript should fail. However, I think it will let me here because if I hover over describe, you can see that TypeScript knows the type and therefore I don't have to manually test it. It'd be very dull if I had to put kind of the right declarations on all of these uh, return functions. Okay, so I've managed to filter the problems thing to all TypeScript files, which will help. I, I wish there was a way, maybe there is to just show the problems for the current file, that'd be useful. But you can see we have cannot find name build and build is not defined, ESLint no undefined. Uh, so again, I'm wondering if I can go to ESLint and just turn off the no undefined rules. So I have the ESLint unobtrusive uh, config, which gives me some options which I quite like, but I might end up disabling most of them. So let's go no and f off. I think that's fine because TypeScript will pick up on, on those now and it's saying cannot find build. I actually would really like to change this API. Uh, I, I've never liked doing like dot fields since I came up with it. I think what I'd rather do to make it more extensible is just you pass a big object to the build function. And this, this string here has only ever been used as a name for documentation, but I quite like it. So I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna change the API uh, so you pass in an object with fields, and in there I'm going to say name Jack. And therefore we don't need that bit. Uh, great. That's still not going to fix our issue. We cannot find build. So let's now write the code we wish we had. So we'll say const build equals require uh, dot slash index. Uh, require statement not part of import statement. no var required and then instead use ear6 style imports or import foo equals require foo imports i didn't know that was a legitimate way to to do it interesting um i guess i mean i guess we can just swap to to import to kind of es uh, 2015 import so we'll import build from index Okay, and then we're getting a nice error with, a, I mean, look at that path there, a lot of, a long path, but there's no export to build, which is correct. So let's go uh, close the JS versions, come here and just do index TS. And I've just done some code in there to get something running. So let's, um, let's create a function called build. And I'm just going to say return to. So we get some errors. Uh, so you can see we have again ESLint no unused vars and then TypeScript ESLint no unused vars. So let's do some more ESLinting and go no unused vars. We'll turn that off because TypeScript will do this for us. I'm actually wondering what I'm going to do actually is just get rid of the unobtrusive plugin. I like it, but it feels like with the TypeScript one, we should just uh, we should just rock with that. So let's get rid of those. Okay. Uh, and it's saying the file is not a module. I think that's because I don't export it. So let's export that. Uh, okay, great. Expected not arguments, but got two. That's because build doesn't take any arguments. So let's say uh, this will be the factory name, which is a string. And then we're going to take some object. So we'll take, um, let's just call it data for now. And I'll type that as an object. And then um, factory name is defined, but never used. Yep, fine. Let's just log them for now. Factory name data. Uh, and we're going to return well, user builder, it expects us to return, and it's, we're actually expected here to return um, a, let's just say we'll return an object for now. Okay. Cannot invoke an expression whose type lacks a call signature. Oh yes, build, sorry. So we call build up here to get a builder, which we then call. So build itself is going to return a function. So to type that, I think we can go in here and we'll just say it's going to return a function like that. And then return to is wrong. Let's say da da da. Um, and then return just an empty object. Okay. So um, let me just close the explorer as well. This is a bit awkwardly squished in. I wish it would do some wrapping. Can I force Prettier to wrap it at all? No, apparently not. 
Okay, well, let's actually uh, create a terminal and see what happens when we run the test. This may work, this may fail drastically. So let's do yarn jest and then it is ts-source. Okay, it's found the right file. And I think it's failing correctly. So we get the log and we are receive, expecting receive to equal thing. Great, okay, so we have our first test and it is failing for legitimate reasons. That's, that's really good. Um, I think once we start typing this more strictly, this wouldn't even compile, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. So, so the factory name is going to be a string. Let's build out what this data type looks like. So whenever I'm, I'm working with types, I like to start actually defining the types before I write lots of the code. So um, let's define this as an interface. Uh, so the interface, this will be build configuration. Let's do that. Let's name it that for now. When I'm, when I'm writing new stuff, I tend to not stress too much about the name straight away. I know that I can easily come back and rename them. Uh, VS Code in particular, you know, I can hover over this and say rename symbol and it will just let, it will do all the work for me. So I don't feel like I need to worry too much about naming things right now. So the thing we definitely need is fields. And this is going to be an object uh, where we're going to take in any number of different objects and the, the value of them is going to need to be uh, one of a few things. So we're going to say I'm taking X, which is a string. Uh, sorry, it's not in quotes, X string. So this this kind of notation here, and let's just say it's always a string for now. Uh, this notation here, I think, is how you do dynamic kind of uh, type declarations. So here I'm saying fields can be any object where the keys are always a string and the return type is a string. Uh, and ESLint is asking for a semicolon. However, I've got Prettier set up to not include semicolons. All right, sorry, I just, uh, I just cut a little bit out of the recording purely because I just ended up trying this TypeScript here is lent to get rid of the warnings and not wanting semicolons. In the end, I've decided it's going to be far easier just to make me use semicolons because then all the TypeScript rules that expect it will just work out the box. So if I save that now, Prettier is going to add a semicolon. So we're now fully semicoloned. Uh, so I build configuration fields, string, return string. This isn't strictly true because what you can do with test data bot is you can return a hard-coded primitive value like a number, a string, or you can return one of the uh, generator functions. So if we look here, at this example, you see the name is going to be this fake thing. This is called a generator as a sequence, but then the age is just a hard coded value. So I think actually what we will do here is, is probably define this as one of many things. So it can be a string or it can be a number, for example, or it can be uh, a generator. A generator is a bit of an overload term in JavaScript because generators are a thing. So I'm actually going to call that factory generator. Oh, that just feels very java -y. Um Let's do field generator and then we'll define a type field generator. Um, I'm kind of, I'm never quite sure between types and interfaces. This feels like good. In fact, I wonder if they should just both be types because I'm not expecting many things to implement them. I think if I define a type, I do need an equals there. I think, yeah, okay. So let's say for now a field generator um, is just, it's gonna basically need to be a, a function um, that returns something. So. Let's just for now, let's say type field generator is a function that takes in some arguments and returns a string. Okay. And then the build function is going to take factory name, which is always going to be a string. And then data is going to be a build configuration. Because I've called this configuration, I'm going to rename this variable from data to config. Okay. And why have we got an error over here? Use an interface instead of a type literal. Okay. Well, there you go, then that answers my question. Um, I would love any guidance on why I should do types rather than interfaces for this, but we will change this to an interface given the, the TypeScript ESLint team probably know more about why I should use an interface than me. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is run the test now and kind of see what happens. And we're still getting the same issue. I think if I made this fields here break the types, so for example, name, I said it could be a string number or a generator, I've said it can't be an array, that should immediately error which it does, name is not assignable. Um, what I'm interested by is if I run the uh, the test, if I get a type error, and I do, okay. Okay, so I guess I can disable this TS just diagnostics to, to get rid of that, but I quite like, I want my test to fail if the types are invalid for sure. Um, so let's just fix that back up. Uh, okay, so let's just try and get literally this test passing. So we're not actually going to deal with any of the generators. This stuff isn't really going to get used, but I'll leave it here as a, as a starting point. So we want to return a function 
Uh, and what we need to do is configure all the fields that should be returned down here. And what I did in the old test data bot is at this point, I would create a class, um, which we may well do again. Uh, and we also need to update this kind of this function here, the return function, because right now it's saying, I think that it returns nothing or it just returns an object. Anyway, for now we'll leave that. So we'll say const field to return. And that's going to equal config.fields. Uh, and what we'll eventually want to do is loop over each of these fields and call the generator. So we're going to kind of make inroads towards that. So I'll say object.entries, config.fields, uh, .map. In fact, we'll reduce over them, I think. We'll reduce. And we get the callback function, which is going to take the um, fields accumulator. Then we're going to get the current value, so current field. And we're going to start this uh, reduce uh, with an object. In here, let's just return fields accumulator. And then this return here, if this becomes fields to return, then I think we're still going to be returning an empty object. And this error is just that current field isn't used. Now, because we're using object.entries, this current field is actually going to be an array of two parts. So it's going to be the field name and the field value. And I can destructure those in there. And so what I'm going to say is we want to do uh, return the fields fields uh, accumulator, if I type it that. Accumulator. Oh, accumulator. Accumulator. Uh, and then we also want to put in the field name, which is going to be the field value. I think I've definitely made at least one typo here because uh, none of this is uh, kind of correcting and printer isn't doing any formatting. Let's just pull that over. Function must return a value. That's fine. We'll, we'll tackle that in a second. I think I've just made a argument of type any. Okay. So fields accumulator, we can just type this for now as an object field name is going to be a string. Uh, I think it would actually know this for us. And then the value is going to be one of the, the, in fact, yeah, I don't think I need those accumulators. I think I might've just made a since I cannot find name, field name, passing error, parameter declaration expected. I think I might need one more bracket there. But that goes there, that doesn't go there. It goes there maybe? And then the reducer comes here and that's the reducer. No, I tell you what, let's just, I'm gonna stop doing my fancy destructuring and we'll just say this takes the Fields accumulator and the current field. And so field name will be current field uh, zero and field value will be current field one. And then I definitely need to look at my brackets because that doesn't need to be there. And then we've got one to any of that. Great. Okay. So after I learned how to do JavaScript, this should uh, be good. So it should know now that current field is a string and then it's one of string or number or field generator. So TypeScript is figuring out what's going on. I'm actually going to create a new type here called um, field. And I'm just going to pull out this big type into it because I then I think that will help kind of the documentation of it. So for example, now current field, it's just going to tell me it's a, it's a string and a field, which is good. And then I can look up what a field is and go there. So that's, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So if I now run this test, We have a test, it's building and it's setting the name to Jack. So we still have a long way to go uh, because this user builder function isn't getting any useful type info. So I think we'd want to use probably TypeScript generics there and, and tell TypeScript what the return is of this function. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff, we haven't done any generators, but that is kind of the first, the first pass into building something using TypeScript. Uh, I feel like I spent a good 10 minutes messing around uh, with ESLint. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please let me know. I'd love to do more stuff like this. Uh, and we'll happily record more of me working on test data bot and converting it into TypeScript. Thanks for watching.